right, so let's move into the next speaker, uh, Brother Abuka. Um, let me just give you a quick background of Brother Abuka. Um, so he's former Somalia Special Envoy to the United States. Uh, he is widely published political analyst, and he is, has well written extensively about post-Civil War Somalia, U.S. foreign policy towards Africa, Islam, and the Middle East. Um, he regularly gives Friday Abutba and lecture on Islam through Ohio Humanities Council Speakers Bureau. And over the past decade or so, um, that's good? No, oh, I was a very decorated guy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Thumma salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Jazakallah wa khairan wa barakay salih. This is the second time on conferences. We're going to go to the next one. There's nothing else to add. This is by far the best conference, or and really by all standards, uh, in, in, in our standard or SDY, or by all standards. We are really. Like if I do say my speaker for stand brought in some good points. Jazakumullah khairan damanti. And Hans Kudaya uh Kulit was so gabin do an hour kega and Musaam Malayna and Madullah. And like in Hans Kudaya a couple of points in Anwahi Kira Hot, speaker is Hore, Wahyala or Ani Sigara, and Rain and Dip Wunoh the Inshallah Ta'ala. And what I say fine nur, uh Jazalva Khairan. In terms of sports stuff, and, uh, building peace based on that, uh, I think it's very essential. Maybe if I told you that, or say that Jarosi, inshallah, taala, in a sahta ayin kareto. And but I'm happy with the Yamahan. The mother of Nahir Kashay, inshallah, taala, against more the Jamaican. Like a car coming down. My era, time to other, but I'm really, really. دين تا إن فهم كذا، I think ساكن وحكوب بالعربي شيخ آدم ويجي حفظ كل يماها يقفكوا إنه كعمل فرع ضد كان برامجت. I think that's a good theme to repeat and it's very important point. It's not only memorizing the Quran but it's also applying it on yourself, teaching it to others and so forth and so on. America, right now we are in a situation where if this building was on fire, okay, and you have s many uh, people who want to put out the fire, but they're wearing shorts, and some of them are not wearing anything on their top, for example, people would be more concerned about are they really Islamically compliant or Sharia compliant or not. You're putting out a fire, for God's sake. It does not matter because this dean teaches you about those things are not even to be discussed, let alone to be settled. Because the priority is to put out the fire. So whether the girl is dressed right or wrong, that's a luxury conversation that our ulama nowadays, God bless them, are, are given a lot of focus, but that's not what this dean is about. So I, I wanted to underscore that. Yeah. Second thing is uh, the point that was raised by an, uh, uh, Yasmin, Jazallahu uh, Khair, which requires a lot of courage. And personally, it touched me, and I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, because about f for five years, I think it was like 2002 uh, till 2005, I, wa I started doing a volunteer work for Central Ohio Suicide Prevention Hotline. So I was doing like two weekends, three hours each, each Saturday and Sunday, so six hours in total for the weekend. So when I started, people were asking me, why are you doing this thing? You know, uh, because really you're encountering people who have either committed or they're at the ideation stage or various levels of you know, trying to harm themselves, basically. 
majority of the cases is a mental health issue depression and then some are drug abuse some are like uh, divorces or situations that they could not handle that they're going through or something but in general mental health was the central uh, uh, theme that uh, compelled them to make those calls now one of my friends at the time said well this is not our issue and this is the part that I wanted to underscore inshallah uh, then what I found out is when I started doing the hotline, they have a log that are the people who are frequent callers, people who, who, who just call in more often than the others. And oftentimes they don't fulfill what they said they're about to do. Some just need the attention, some need to talk, some need to uh, want to get references to various services. So I looked at those lists, and this one number had like Islamic name on the person. Uh, it was a female. So she started calling. And then one weekend, I started answering the phone, and we started talking. I didn't identify myself religiously, because you're not supposed to be doing that. But you can advise them based on faith and what's good and how to cope and so forth and so on. Wallahi, it's a very serious issue. And we need to take seriously these kind of issues and try to offer it. Parents, and, and I think it was already said this morning, and I'm going to emphasize again, we really need to think about that. At the early stage when there is a need expressed to be there, to be helpful, that's the Islamic way of doing things. <clears throat> أحب الناس لله أنفعهم للناس رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام The person whom Allah loves the most is the person who is helpful to others to people, to human beings there is no limitation on Islam or non-Islam or young or old or black or white or الناس includes everybody includes all people. So even if your services is directed to people that have nothing to do with Islam, you're doing, you're fulfilling what Allah wants you. Forget about what particular sheikh might have that opinion of his. And we will respect that. We respect the opinion, but we won't have to take it like Imam Malik said. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, what he said is that you don't like this sheikh unless he's telling you the person in this grave, he was pointing at the Prophet ﷺ's grave. Unless he tells you the Prophet said this, or Allah said this, the rest is his opinion. We respect the opinion, but we don't have to take the opinion. So help the people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to help them. And that's what this theme of this conference is. Um, how to provide service and honor involved in service. I think, again, everything has been said. I just want to go back and just emphasize a couple of points. Sincerity is very critical. When you're providing services, it has to be for a cause that's bigger than you. A lot of people said that. And I fully agree with that. But sincerity is very critical. Also, humility is very critical that you don't grow arrogant because somebody's below you, that you are helping them, you know. And there is a tendency for service providers to feel that way, that a person is like below me because I'm helping that individual. You know, that's, that's another thing. Uh, the, <coughs> the other thing that I want to um, say is um, we live in a society that we're all aware of. It's self-obsessed society, basically. The me, myself, and I culture that we're all familiar with. But the human being, the dignity of the human being, and the worth of the human being depends on what he or she provides for others, not for themselves. If it was the best, if it makes you the best human being because you are, you are a narcissistic and you just love yourself and provide for yourself and you have all the billions, Donald Trump will be the person who gets that award. <laughs> Hands down, right? 
hands down. But that's not the case. Because the person who has really value, you know, the value within the society is the person who sacrifices his time or his wealth or his intellect and her wealth and her intellect and her service. That's the good person. May Allah make us uh, that person, inshallah ta'ala, and I'll conclude my remark with that, which is Abdullah. Thank you.